everybody, this is Mike. I'm here with a new video. As you know, I've been planning on doing a lot of upgrades to my PC. That was going to be my summer project, but thanks to Intel and the massive delays around Skylake, um, I wasn't able to do that. I had to put it off. So basically, I'm going to be making a series of videos where I show my upgrade process. This first video, I'm going to just show you real quick my current system and the parts for my um, upgrades. So that's what we'll be doing. My current system is built around an Ivy Bridge 3570K on a Z77 ASRock motherboard. Um, of course the 3570K is under my water block. It's been a good chip. I've been running it three years, overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz, 24-7. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Good performance, nice overclock. I can't complain about that. I can complain about the Z77 Extreme 4 ASRock motherboard. Um, first of all, and worst of all, it misreports voltages, which could be really dangerous if you were really pushing for a high overclock. It underreports your voltage, so you would be have higher voltages than you think you do if you're looking at the statistics. And ASRock refused to fix it and played dumb. And I. Uh, they make some good products, I'll admit, even some high-end ones now, but I'm just not going with ASRock anymore because I felt sort of burned by this. Um, so anyway, I'll be upgrading those both to take advantage of my new Skylake part. You see here my water block is an XSPC Raystorm. It's a good water block, it looked cool, and the fact that you could put blue LEDs in it fit my overall blue color scheme, as you can see. The blue tubing and blue LED fans, blue RAM, everything was blue, but I'm going away from that. So I'm going to go with 32 gigs of RAM and an i7 in my new build, and you'll be seeing those in a minute. The other parts of my current build, you see all these Cougar blue LED fans, those will be gone. One part I'm definitely keeping is my pump and reservoir combo. As you can see, it's an XSPC D5 pump and Photon 150 reservoir combo unit. Frankly, I love it. It's beautiful. It's heavy-duty construction. Um, good looking. And I really have no complaints about it. So that will be staying. My video card will also be staying. This is a 7950. Um, with an EK uh, full cover water block and back plate on it. I've had a couple comments about, oh, you're doing all these upgrades, you're spending all this money on your PC, but you're using this three-year-old plus um, video card. And I, I will say, I'm not much of a AAA gamer. I don't tend to push really hard on the graphics. Um, I'm going to upgrade to Pascal next year as far as um, a video card. But uh, for now, I mean, I'll tell you guys, I don't buy the newest game. I will I just keep playing things like old um, Paradox games, like Europa Universalis and, you know, Civilization. So, and even like things like JRPGs. So I'm just not pushing the graphics very hard. And I decided to wait for Pascal because there's going to be such a leap, I think, with the new architecture and with HBM memory. So I'm going to hold on to ye old 7950 for another, at least another six months. Um, but like I said, I don't need a new graphics card that much. And as you can see, all of this is in a Fractal Design Define S, which I did a review earlier, on, you can see on my channel. It's a pretty good case. I've been a little disappointed in the quality control. The front audio doesn't work. And I've tried, sort of without success, to get Fractal to give me what I need to fix it, and they're sort of a pain. I have to admit, I was dying for a Case Labs case, and I put it off and got cheap and went with this, just because it was open and good for water cooling. But I'm a pretty high-end consumer, and I'm going to be buying a Case Labs case, and, you know, cost be damned, I have to have that super awesomeness. So, oh, and the last part of the build that I didn't really make reference to is um, this old Corsair 
semi, uh, what do you call it? You know, it's um, a semi-modular power supply. And it's been good. I haven't had any problems with it. I want to move up to one of the nicer EVGA gold or platinum units. And I will be doing that soon. But as long as this keeps plugging away, I'm not really feeling that pressed to do that. Um, the other parts of my system I won't be changing. Just the Asus 1080p monitor and my really awesome K70 RGB keyboard. And I have to tell you, that is a fine piece of equipment. The best keyboard available. I have it with MX uh, Cherry MX Brown keys and it's just fabulous and I love the RGB um, capabilities of it. It's a lot of fun. It looks really cool. So that's that. So that's my current system and you're going to be seeing me make a lot of changes to it. So now let's take a look at my new parts that are going to be going in. Okay guys, let's look at the parts for my new updated build. The first thing that's going to be going in is going to be the Intel Core i7 6700K, the fully unlockable i7. I'm not going to unbox it, there's not really much to show you. There's, you know, there's the chip itself. Um, this one doesn't even come with a cooler anymore. You have to provide your own cooling, but who used the stock coolers anyway? This was the biggest reason I was delayed so long, because um, it took a long time to be able to get one of these, uh, but finally did, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm upgrading from an i5 now, of course, um, a 3570K, and I've been doing more with video and photos, so it makes sense for me to go with um, an i7, just to get a little more capability, the, the hyper-threading, stuff like that. Not that I think it's going to be a huge, huge upgrade, but it should be nice. Especially when I combine it with 32 gigs of DDR4. I went with a Corsair Vengeance, low profile. I always use low profile RAM. I think all those big heat spreaders and stuff on the top are just bullshit. They don't do anything. Um, I'm going with 32 gigs, upgrading from the 8 of DDR3 that I had before. So that should be a big upgrade. Um, it's 2666 megahertz. So pretty fast. Um, not really a lot to show you here, but it's four DIMMs of eight gigabytes each. So I think that'll be a nice big upgrade for me. Another thing I'm gonna do, one, two, and three, these are Corsair SP120 Quiet Edition fans. They're two packs, and I have three of them. So basically, I am going to be switching out the fans in my system. And the reason I chose these, and some of you are going to laugh at me, is looks. Um, they come with the interchangeable rings of different colors, and I want white. My color scheme is black, white, and chrome and I need fans so these will be black and white fans and they will look exactly like what I want in this system if you we go back over to my old system over here you see I have blue LED Cougar fans which are nice fans but they won't fit the color scheme at all because if you look I already started with my last update I went with chrome fittings and white cable extensions so my new color scheme is going to strip out all this blue and go with black and white. So, I decided to buy six of these Corsair fans with the white rings. I thought they would look best in the system. And I've actually used these before. They are good fans. They're not the best fans, but it's interesting. I've always felt that at the low end, the regular fans that are sort of less than $20 each, they're all sort of the same. When you get into the higher end fans like noise blockers or Noctua fans, yes, there's a big bump up in improvement. But I think when you're buying $15 or less fans, just regular run-of-the-mill fans, there's not a whole heck of a lot of difference. And I'm going to be running these through an NZXT fan controller at a really low RPM anyway. So 
I think they're going to be nice and quiet, and I think they're going to look really cool in my new build. So those are my Corsair fans. Let's move those out of the way. Well, here's a boring part, but as long as we're talking about color schemes, this is Primo Chill white tubing. I'm currently using Primo Chill blue tubing, but I'm going to move over to this white. And that's just to go with the color scheme of the new build. I, if you're using soft tubing, I highly recommend this Primo Chill Advanced LRT. I think it's the best soft tubing you can get. Um, and I, they're all reasonably priced. So, one of these days I'm going to make a hard, um, a hard tubed case with, uh, you know, where I'm going to have to bend the tubing and stuff. But for now, I'm just going to go with this Primo Chill. And I think it's going to look awesome. Okay. This is going to be an important part. This is my new water block. If we go back over here, you can see again my XSPC Raystorm water block. Good little water block, but a little cheaper. Good performance, but not the looks I'm looking for. Not as classy. It's plastic. Uh, I don't want blue lights on it anymore. So I'm going to go with this EK Supremacy block. And EK makes great stuff. I already used their block on my graphics card. Let's just show you real quick what it looks like. Hardware. The back plates uh, if you're using AMD. And here it is. So this is the water block I'm using. It's nickel. Nickel plate and copper. I mean, you can feel it's heavy. Like, it's a heavy, high-quality product, and it's got some little spots on it, but once I wipe it up and take the sticker off the little EK logo here, it's going to just look amazing. And it's going to match perfectly with all my chrome fittings and stuff in the new build. So I think it's going to be just awesome. I'm really looking forward to getting this set up. So that is an EK. Supremacy Evo, clean CSQ, full nickel. And that was a hundred bucks at Performance PCs. So, water blocks aren't too expensive. And I'm really looking forward to getting that sucker in there. I know, I should edit all this out. And the last piece I have to show you is the motherboard. This is the Asus, let's zoom out, Asus Z170A. This motherboard is, you have to get a Z170 motherboard to go with Skylake. So I chose this one because Asus makes good stuff. The price was pretty good. This was like 160 bucks. Um, not too bad. And it, it, it's very full featured. Uh, the reviews have been really good. If you don't believe me, look at PC Per or Tech Report, the places that have done reviews of it, um, have had nothing but good things to say. And um, I think it's going to be great. And also, it goes with my color scheme. Uh, you know, not to stress it too much, but, you know, it's got, it's a black PCB. It's got white and gray accents. Maybe the tiniest bit of blue, but nothing real visible. So, I think this is going to look great in the machine. And... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting it rolling. Plus, Asus' software is awesome. I look forward to having a motherboard that reports the voltage properly, but also has super nice and easy to use uh, BIOS or UEFI software. So I think that's going to be great. Uh, maybe I can open this up and pull the thing itself out. Here's the motherboard in person. Still wrapped up. I'm not going to unwrap it, but... You'll see, you'll be seeing it soon enough when I do installation. So, that's that. So that's all I have for now. Um, these are the parts that are going to go in my new build. And thanks everybody for watching. And you'll be seeing more videos very soon.